I thought it might be fun to walk you through a uh, work in process. Um, this is a small bed by a front entry uh, on one of my client projects and we're going to be renovating it this spring. So we've already started it. Uh, as you can see, we've taken out a fair number of plants. Um, it was fully planted before, but in the middle there is a existing viburnum davidi which was really dominant in this bed it was pretty much taken up the um, entire bed so i went in and i thought and they really liked it right and it's very handsome um uh, shrub with uh and it was in great condition you know it's got that leathery foliage um it's gonna have the blooms you know it's a common plant but it's a it's a super effective plant and a, and a good plant um, so that was existing, but much, much larger. So we went in and we cut out major portions of it to bring it down into size and hopefully be able to rejuvenate it uh, and keep it as a smaller plant and, um, and just a lot less of it. Uh, the other thing that was here, and I'm gonna try and find a photo that I can insert in here so you can kind of see what we started with, but where along the front there where it's now all stripped out uh, we had a hedge of Lanicera um, twiggy um, and it was it was fine and it was it was it was healthy it was good but it was really established and kind of getting rangy and honestly it was a little out of place because it was the only place that we had that plant and the only place that would really uh, you know kind of built a hedge so and it was just heavy and it was um overly dominant and really not doing much so we took that out but that plant is um looks great in combination with the leathery large foliage of the viburnum davidi and it is a super tough plant an easy easy to grow plant so we as we took that hedge out, uh, we uh, took some divisions of it. And so we are going to try and reestablish it in, uh, in the uh, back here. And you can kind of see that they're uh, fully dormant. <laughs> they're not uh, looking like much right now, but honestly, that is a very tough plant. And I think it's gonna um, uh, take the transplant just fine. And it might sit around for a little while, but it's going to, um, wake back up and be uh, a uh, finely textured yellow evergreen um, and I say evergreen and you're looking at it and you're probably thinking well gee that's not evergreen that's <laughs> that looks pretty dormant to me uh, part of that is we cut it back hard and it can handle that and we had a uh, winter that was you know exceptionally hard on some of the evergreen foliage so um, I'll put on the screen what that plant looks like when it's in its prime. Um, but it will be a finely textured yellow um, in combination with those bigger, bolder green leaves of the viburnum. And then the other thing that we kept and we will probably use uh, uh, as divisions is this wonderful little saxifrage, uh, which doesn't look like much now, but it's really a nice... Uh, nice plant in spring where it gets a, I mean, it's an evergreen ground cover that gets a froth of uh, airy white flowers in spring. Uh, very easy to transplant. So we left that stand of plants there and then we'll probably um, uh, cannibalize it a bit so that we can spread it around. We've actually got a nice stand of it over here on the other side of the driveway, or excuse me, walkway. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, so the other kind of important uh, part of this bed that we're kind of trying that we're trying to address is that we want it to look good from uh, multiple directions. So this is going to be the view from inside the house, looking out the window, and I'm standing right next to the house right now. <laughs> um, and so I want to make sure that what we plant in here remains kind of low close to the window. And then what we're gonna be uh, adding first as the kind of major anchor of the renovation is on this corner, <clears throat> we're gonna put a 
uh, Japanese maple. And I'm actually out selecting that maple uh, today. And I have some top contenders uh, that, uh, that I've got my eye on at one of the local nurseries. One of uh, the top contenders. I've got three that I'm considering. So, and they're all Acer palmatums. Uh, and I'm looking at Katsura as a possibility. And I'm looking at um, Villa Taranta as a possibility. And I'm going to butcher the name on this last one, so I'll put it on the screen. But it's uh, 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 Okonoito or something like that. Anyways, I will put that on the screen because I'm sure I just said that and misremembered it but I've grown um, all of those although I haven't grown the katsura I've grown the other two in other gardens and they're really just nice selections for um, good seasonal flow nice uh, uh, small size which is going to be important on this bed that we don't want it to get too big so that is what we're considering as we're doing this bed and that is kind of a before or midstream, I guess, because, uh, you know, this was when I first started working with this client, it was fully planted, but we, uh, we just hadn't done anything with it yet. So this spring, we're going to do something with it, and um, I will try and uh, give you some updates along the way. Okay, and this is the winner. This is a uh, Acer Palmatum Katsura. Um, and I'm over at uh, Dennis 70s in Lake Oswego and they had three really nice ones uh, or three, one really nice one and two really good ones. Um, and I chose actually uh, this one and it's going to be delivered to our job site and we'll be getting that planted next week. Um, I selected this one be, uh, versus, you know, some of the other ones which are actually a little fuller at the base and whatnot. But as you may or may not recall in the garden that we're doing, I really was looking for something that was uh, initially kind of limbed up a little higher, uh, has kind of an open vase shape, you know, some good, decent stature to start with, and really no signs of significant damage that I, that I can see. Uh, it's a little, sli slightly one-sided, but for me, that was kind of a benefit because of where I'm going to put it. I really want it to kind of nest into the to the site and um, having it a little less full on one side actually wasn't an issue. It was actually kind of a benefit. So uh, stay tuned. Okay, this entry garden is really starting to take shape. So we had our uh, tree. Uh, the tree that we selected it was delivered and planted today uh, so that's an acer palmatum katsura decently sized going in but will um, remain relatively small and compact and will not outgrow that space so i was really pleased to find um, one with you know enough stature so that it was kind of present right away in the garden and um yeah, so that's really cool. So that's kind of the anchor. The the uh, Let's go look at that foliage again. And this is its real claim to fame. Look at how beautiful that emerging foliage is, which gives us an opportunity to kind of play with that. So we're doing a couple of things in this bed is we are linking it to the rest of the garden, both in color and in some repetition of the plants. Uh, this ground covering saxifrage is gonna be really beautiful here very soon and we'll be uh, we'll be uh, kind of distributing that even more out front because it's such a wonderful ground cover. Uh, we have that viburnum David eye that we cut back hard and those Lanicera um, twiggies which look like heck right now but they should uh, bounce back and um, and you know be a finely textured yellow. At rounding out the evergreen structure, I've got a couple of dwarf rhododendrons in here. That one's going to get about uh, four feet tall, could get to five feet or so, uh, which that spot can certainly accommodate. And then this one is kind of a low mounding, uh, supposed to get about three feet by three feet. Throughout, there's this nice little color story that I'm going to do some close-ups. So this is a Virginia, white blooming with a dark eye, um, 
and it'll just be evergreen foliage kind of low to the ground as they're here in the containers it's a little confusing because um, they look bigger than what they're going to be these are basically at their mature size and when they get settled into the ground they're going to look a little bit more in scale um, ultimately maybe not this first season um, here's a, a dwarf roadie i really like the kind of bud color it's going to be um, uh, heck let me show you the name of that it's called winsome which is nice name um, it's going to be you know dark buds opening to lighter colored flowers so it's going to have a nice uh, progression um, a little hosta that'll fill in that spot nicely without getting too big um, that one is called mini skirt so as the name implies it's going to be kind of small uh, a wonderful fern this is a polystichum neoblatum and a stilby great red foliage it'll have white uh, frothy spires a little later. The stilbies do really well in this garden. Uh, a lot of gardens can't accommodate them because they dry out and they don't look very good, but we've got them in different parts of the garden and they just look uh, great year-round. We've got really heavy, uh, moist, retentive soil here. Uh, that's a um, Ethereum, um, a Japanese painted fern, and the particular variety is called Ghost. So it's quite robust, very upright. It'll have a kind of a silvery tone. And then in the far back, we've got a thelictrum called black stocking. So that's gonna be just all the way up the window, probably about six or seven feet, and just be kind of a frothy scree from the inside. Um, and so the, we've got the main plants in or selected here, and we've got a, a pretty significant thing missing. So let me talk you through that. We need a kind of a small, dwarf evergreen here and I think I'm going to go with a, a, a conifer maybe a dwarf hanoki we've got another one kind of over here in this part of the um, the scene and so that'll be a nice repetition if I kind of just take something same or similar to that hanoki and kind of bounce it uh, right over here and repeat that and then we're also making an edit in this bed uh, it's very possible that I'll do a third uh, conifer right there. So it occurs to me there were a couple plants that I didn't point out to you. So I'm going to go back. I love this. This is a Blatilla. Okay, let's see. Show you the. It's a moisture loving ground, um, kind of a. It's an orchid, Chinese ground orchid. Blatilla. Striata Chiron, and it should like this moist soil and perform really well for us. This uh, bleeding heart is a favorite of mine. I love the yellow foliage, and what I love, you know, you're very accustomed to seeing the one called Gold Heart, which has that yellow foliage and uh, really pink flowers. I really like the white flower. It's not quite as jarring, and it's just uh, very elegant. Uh, this will, you know, be mostly a spring performer. Um, it may die back later, or sometimes they, in this setting, it might actually retain its foliage for quite a while because, of, again, because of that moisture. Anyways, there's a very, um, uh, there's a continuing thread of color that goes through here. Um, some that is kind of keying off this kind of emerging foliage which this foliage, by the way, will, uh, it's not gonna be like this all season. It's gonna go and become more green as this uh, season goes on and then change yet again in fall. Uh, but that early season is gonna coincide with, you know, the fresh foliage of this, the buds and blooms of that viburnum, more subtly, you know, this little rhododendron with its uh, flowers is going to speak very nicely to this little Virginia and we've got a nice balance of evergreen and um, seasonal plants in there. On the opposite side of that front entry we've been working on this bed for 
a uh, little while um, and uh, making good progress. Uh, this season we are solving what I thought was a, um, you know, kind of a more, we, we didn't have enough evergreen structure. So we're working on resolving that. Um, this garden is very much a woodland garden. We've got mature, beautiful tree form rhododendrons that uh, the client loves. Um, and they are really very beautiful when bloom. Got the high canopy, uh, definitely kind of a woodland vibe. So we're kind of going all in on some of the, uh, the roadies and selecting some interesting and dwarf varieties. So here's another one uh, selected for, you know, it's compact habit. And I'm always looking for those that have that um, indumentum on the back uh, of the leaf. One, it's a little bit more interesting. And two, it does um, seem to uh, help it um, stave off the um, lace, lace, lace bug. Um, and we have been looking and looking and looking and looking for an Edgeworthia for in here. And there's just none to be found. Uh, so I'm kind of keeping a gap in there and hoping that we'll find an Edgeworthia chrysantha at some point. Um, so these dwarf roadies, here's a second one. Look at that color. It's just like, wow. And that indumentum, isn't that nice? Isn't that interesting? It's not your standard roadie. Let me show you the name on this one. Jens Jorgensen. J no, Jens Jorgen Sorensen. Boy, that's a mouthful. Anywho. I just thought that was really beautiful. The flowers are nice, but that foliage is awesome and it's gonna be very uh, compact uh, in this bed. Um, so it's very, you know, it's pink. It's uh, vi different shades of pink. We'll add in uh, some other plants that are repeated uh, in different parts of the garden. Um, you know, maybe I'll get a few more of these to include over there to kind of knit the two uh, together. I think that would be a, a good addition. Um, so more details to be added on this one. And we're keeping our lookout for that real focal point of where we hope to get an Edgeworthia in there. Um, that's back here. We've got a spring blooming shrub. So that's a trio of um, Dutzia. Well, our tag is there. So let's check. It's Dutzia. Um, Yuko Cherry Blossom. So again, kind of a lighter pink. We've got some uh, deciduous ferns that aren't showing quite yet. Uh, and I repeated that uh, blatilla that we used on the other side. It should really like this here. Um, I also re repeated one of those um, yellow uh, dicentra. That's called dicentra white gold. And if you're wondering, I guess I haven't mentioned, these are um, hellebore. They're pink frost. So this is their uh, flower time. The foliage has been cut away so we can see the flowers better. Uh, this little hooker has actually done very well for us here. And I don't remember the name. I'll try and look that up and put it on the screen. Uh, but it's basically, there's lots of them that would uh, introduce that type of color. So very kind of zippy and insistent pink on those and then softer in some other areas. So pink to magenta to white uh, with some <clears throat> spots of yellow is kind of the theme that we're doing in these beds. And I guess I'll turn around and show you the other part that we're working on. This is a um, kind of a hedgelet next to the lawn for fragrance and to kind of divide space. Uh, that's a trio of Daphne eternal fragrance. So those are still getting established. They should, you know, really kind of uh, get busy this year. And we can see that they're beginning to bud up. Slightest bit of bloom. Those are gonna be super fragrant and just be a really nice greeting at the uh, front. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to check back in uh, on this project as it gets a chance to grow on a little bit and fill in. So if you like this type of uh, content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and please push that like button. And if you're so inclined, even share it with your friends. So uh, until next time.
拜。